We're live, live, live. How you doing, everybody? Bruce here, traveling with Bruce. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the channel, Traveling with Bruce. Another day, a beautiful sunny day here in Creston, BC, here in Kanata, you know, the great white north. Um, probably about 80 degrees today for us. So, been about, uh, I don't know if we've hit 80 yet this year, maybe once already, but uh, boy, it's been a while since so we got back up here. We uh, we got warm about two weeks ago, and then we hit a bit of a cooling streak, and it's been in the 60s, 70s ever since. But today, I think it's the first day of several where we're now going to climb and get in a bit of a heat wave. And uh, not complaining, got the fan on over there, keeping me cool. It's all good. If it really got cool, I'd turn the air conditioner on, but uh, why do that if you don't have to? How are you guys doing? Welcome to the show. Uh, today is June the 19th. I'm looking for my glasses to look at the thing. June 19th, 2018. It is Tuesday. And uh, welcome one, welcome all. Uh, those of you who have never been to this show before, uh, just did a Google search about some information on cruising or you're doing a YouTube search, you came across me. I'm Bruce, traveling with Bruce, living in Creston, British Columbia, three miles north of, of the Idaho border. Uh, the USA, and uh, we talk about cruise ships here all the time. We talk about cruise vacations. We talk about ports of call. We talk about the new ships that are coming. We talk about uh, uh, 20 days to go until my cruise, eight days to go until my cruise. We uh, we compare notes on cruise ships. If you're addicted to cruising, you've come to the right place. If you're new to cruising, never been on a cruise before, this is your channel too. Uh, you will find out information on here that um, – you might not find anywhere else because you're talking with bona fide cruisers, those of us who love to go. I love it when we get someone new here who's never been on a cruise before. Um, we, 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 we give you any advice we can. Find out, tell us what the ship you're on, uh, when, you know, where's your cruise, where are you going? And uh, we'll give you pointers on uh, the Caribbean cruise if you're taking one of those, Alaska cruise or Mediterranean or whatever it's going to be. And if there's anything about the cruise industry you don't quite understand or advice you want to get, just ask. We are more than happy to help you uh, uh, figure out the world of cruising because there's a lot to it. It's not just as simple as uh, booking a, 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 a cruise and going. <laughs> there's so much to it prior to it, during, and all that. Uh, but I will tell you this. Uh, once you take a cruise, uh, chances are you won't wait as long uh, between the uh, first time you got on a ship and the second time. Because once you get back home from that first cruise, chances are 99% that you're going to want to go back on another cruise ASAP, and you'll book a second cruise with a lot less lead time <laughs> than the first time you ever booked a cruise. That's what I think. That's my experience. That's what I noticed from a lot of my uh, my viewers, and uh, it's just a ton of fun. We love it. Uh, if you're uh, if you're already a subscriber, welcome back. If you're not a subscriber, you want to become one. There's a button right there. You can click on that one anytime you want, or over here is the other subscriber button, and this one here has uh, the subscribe button, plus there's a little bell notification icon there. If you click on that as well, you'll be notified every time I do a new video, every time I go live. Speaking of live, I am live Monday to Friday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do a second show at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Today being Tuesday, I'm on tonight at 8 o'clock for a second show. Generally, tonight, tonight's show, trivia. We're playing trivia tonight. I'm ready to go. I've got trivia questions lined up. Uh, Saturdays, I do a show at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, Eastern Time, and it's a mix of uh, cruise news and some trivia as well, and we just seem to have a lot of fun with it. And I welcome all of you to the channel, all of you to the show, and if you have any questions about cruising, just fire away. Uh, if you're just watching the show live, uh, say hi. If you like, tell me where you're watching me from. What's your high temperature today? What kind of weather you got? And if you have any questions on cruising, of course, fire away as always. I'm more than happy to uh, to entertain any of those. I've been watching uh, uh, info today. I've been trying to figure out information on a uh, number of little topics, uh, catching up on some developing news or what have you. There's one ship I'm wondering about. It's the Carnival Magic. Uh, I talked about it yesterday. The Carnival Magic left port, uh, Port Canaveral on Saturday. This being Tuesday, so that's like three days ago. Um, and it's uh, doing a uh, seven-day uh, Caribbean cruise. Um, however, the ship didn't leave port until three in the afternoon. Oh, no, 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 I'll take that back. It left port later than that. 
it didn't let passengers on the ship until three in the afternoon. That's highly unusual. Normally, cruise ships will get their passengers off ASAP by starting at seven in the morning until about 10 or 11 in the morning to get them all out of there. And then about 10, 11 in the morning, they just start bringing on the new passengers uh, who are on for the next cruise. In this week's uh, cruise, they didn't let passengers on until three o'clock. So I can imagine that the folks who were looking to get on the Carnival Magic, upwards of 3,000 of them, were probably jam-packed in the waiting room and the uh, the uh, ticketing room, the, the agent area, waiting for the ship to start boarding people. And um, uh, it would have been pretty packed because uh, people would have been backed up for hours. Uh, anyone who arrived at 10 in the morning, 11 in the morning, 11 through, you know, they're looking at three, four, four and a half hours. And with kids, oh, that could have been rough. So uh, delay getting on the ship. Uh, story was that there is a, a mechanical issue with the engine. The ship cannot go at top speed. It cannot go at its normal cruising speed. It's traveling at a reduced speed. And therefore, they had to bypass and give up on catching uh, uh, their first stop, which was St. Thomas. They were going to go uh, one day at sea and then make it to St. Thomas from Port Canaveral. They dropped St. Thomas, gave everybody a $50 room credit as compensation, had an extra day at sea instead, and today they are in San Juan, Puerto Rico. That's where they're supposed to be right now. And uh, from here, they'll uh, they'll head out tonight. They have two more stops, and then back uh, to my uh, to uh, Port Canaveral one day at sea. They should be back on Saturday. The question, of course, is will that mechanical issue be resolved by then has the uh, cruise line already brought uh, personnel to san juan puerto rico to meet the ship are their mechanics uh, literally being flown in with parts um and are they working on the sh on the engine right now as we speak i do not know um will the ship be at full speed tonight uh will the ship um be actually repaired and uh, um, maintained by mechanics at Port Canaveral on Saturday coming up, and will it work? So uh, we we don't know. So I'm kind of curious about that. If anyone knows anything, let me know. If you hear anything? Uh, because next week's trip might be delayed again uh, if it's uh, if the ship's not able to go at full power or at full speed uh, to its next uh, for its next seven day cruise. We'll find out what's going on there. That's some of the latest news on one of the ships in play. The other news that I'm reading up on is. Uh, uh, they're talking about, analysts are talking about how cruise lines have added quite a number of new ships this year. Carnival, I think, has 18 new ships coming uh, in the next two years, I think it is, on their throughout their entire brand names. Uh, Carnival owns Princess, Carnival owns Hall in America, Cunard, uh, uh, Costa Cruises, P&O, um, Ada, a bunch of lines. Um, and a number of these little cruise lines are getting one and two ships each in the next uh, couple of years. And so uh, Carnival is expanding like crazy. But this winter, uh, record numbers of uh, cruise ships for the Caribbean, record numbers of berths or cabins available for uh, purchase by, by passengers. And the cruise lines are confident, absolutely confident, they'll sell them all, not a problem. But uh, analysts are not so sure if that is attainable. Analysts are going to be wondering, let me just move the camera a little bit. Analysts are wondering whether there might just be too many uh, cruise ships with too many cabins. And even if the cruise lines are, say, wrong with their predictions by one or two or three percentage points, would that be enough of a dip to cause cruise lines to slash prices or begin the incentive rollouts uh, stuff like uh, you know book a balcony and get a free specialty restaurant voucher or uh, maybe uh, the drink package is 30 percent off if you book it before or all kinds of incentives they might lower the cost of the cabin to entice the cabins to be to sell out faster because bodies on board a ship spend money uh, empty cabins don't make a dime for the cruise for the entire cruise but even if you discount the cabin even the last the last 200 cabins if you discount them and you fill them up with uh say 200 cabins 400 people 500 people with some children uh you get 500 potential people spending money that wouldn't have been there otherwise and so it's uh highly uh, lucrative and very important for the cruise line to sell up anyway we're going to find out uh, the capacity numbers are higher i think this year carnival has more births more percentage of all of its births in the caribbean this year than ever before it's a record for them 
They are really leaning on the Caribbean to deliver. Uh, hurricane season is incredibly important here. If uh, hurricane season is light this year, there will be minimal damage uh, at ports, hopefully none, and all ports will be open for business. It's all good. If, however, we have a hurricane season like last year, where it rips up certain islands or certain ports of call, now there's a restriction on where cruise ships can go, and now they will cluster in various areas where they can be accommodated. And that is congestion, and that's bad news for passengers because with, uh, you know, uh, 30 cruise ships a week, 40 cruise ships, 50 cruise ships, you're talking hundreds of thousands of passengers a week uh, traveling the Caribbean, and you may find that there are seven ships in Grand Cayman in one day averaging 4,000, 4,500 passengers. That's, that's, that's too much. I mean, the island can take on 15,000 people. They've had 17,000, but pushing 20 or 25,000 people uh, by tender on Cayman is a bit too much. And uh, Tom St. Thomas, nice place that it is. You really don't want to be in St. Thomas with six cruise ships hanging around. It's, uh, it's just going to be overrun. Uh, too many people and uh, the shore excursions are just going to be out of control. The congestion at the ports, too much. So you want to have all the ports operating. You want to have them all running smoothly so that the cruise lines can schedule their visits on the day they're supposed to be there and uh, give us a pleasant experience. So we'll have to see how this uh, works out this year. Um, like I say, the analysts, the stock analysts out there, some of them are skeptical that these cruise lines can deliver these th these numbers. They, they don't know if they can pull it off. I wonder uh, outside elements like nature, uh, hurricanes are, are one that can screw it all up. Uh, not just the day of the storm, but the lingering effect with recovery and other factors like oil prices or uh, an economic slowdown or um, spike in interest rates, um, you know, whatever it might be. So we'll have to see how it, uh, how it all comes together. In the meantime, I'm going to say hi to my folks who are watching here today, who are watching the channel, saying hi to me, signing in. Got a bunch here, a uh, bunch of messages coming through. Uh, it looks like we have a good picture again today. I think our internet issues might be... Uh, uh, might be hopefully solved here for a while. Um, we don't seem to be having slowdowns and that type of thing on the picture. So I'm happy with that. And uh, hopefully everything is coming through for everybody today. Uh, let's say hi and see who signed in first. Uh, first off, Tom Henry and Ann Jordan were first in saying hi to me. Wes Morrison's telling me it's 77 degrees and he's got uh, some well-deserved rain in New Braunfels, Texas, which... Uh, is bringing it from 100 degrees down to 77. Yes, I know you like that. Uh, that will make life a little easier to take. Tracy Dunlop, hi, Bruce, and all mid-90s today in Naples. So it's hot. Uh, at least it's not a 100-degree heat index, but still up there. Randy Lucas is back. Uh, greetings, Bruce, and all. Wonderfully sunny day here in the Ridge in Paradise, California, with a high of 85. Welcome back. I know you were in Mexico with some pals of yours. I think you rode the motorbikes down there. Welcome home. Uh, and uh, Tom Henry saying hi, and Bob Hollis is here today too. Hi, Bruce and all. 94 in Atlanta today, hot and humid. Welcome back, Bob. Been a while. Nice to see you here today. Steve Bartley, tornado watch until 7 p.m. He's saying uh, had a big hailstorm, minor damage in Greeley, Colorado. Wow. In Colorado, uh, hurricane, uh, tornado watch. Yikes. Bob Hollis, Bruce, I have friends on the Carnival Magic. They did make it to St. Thomas today. Really, at 11.30. Very good. Uh, sailing out at 7 tonight. Thank you for telling me that. Um, this is the first news I've been able to get from anywhere uh, on that uh, ship. I did not think they would make it. Um, so rather than doing uh, San Juan, which I think was supposed to be today, they did St. Thomas instead. Um, wondering if they've uh, uh, killed another itinerary instead, because they obviously had two sea days. Uh, interesting, when getting in at 1130, that's obviously late. They like to get there by 6 a.m., 7 a.m., so by 9 people can get off. But at least they did make it today. Very interesting. Uh, Cam is saying hi, everybody. Randy uh, is saying hey, Cam. Uh, Richard C. is here saying hello to everybody. Uh, Tom Henry, 100 degrees in Richmond. Yikes. Uh, we've got Seakeeper here today. Uh, Seakeeper 100 uh, is telling me it's uh, 94 in Tequista. Sunny, muggy, and enjoyable nonetheless. In Florida there, so, thumbs up. Big for uh, my big fat stainless steel whack a troll sledgehammer. Is at the ready in case any trolls show up? I think we've been kind of, it's been quiet on the troll front now for about a week. And those of you who don't know, about a week, week and a half ago, uh, I was doing my show and about 10 minutes in, we had all these uh, idiots show up and just causing all kinds of headaches. We were trying to eliminate them from existence, but they were giving us thumbs downs and 32 thumbs downs in five minutes showed up on the channel. 
that's a record. And uh, the viewers who were with me were so upset, they started giving me the thumbs ups. And uh, by the time the show was over, we had 40 thumbs ups and 32 thumbs downs. We, we beat them back, but uh, also a bunch of those got reported and I've deleted them from, uh, from my channel. But, uh, you know, every once in a while it can happen. Uh, the trolls are out there, but so far, quiet. We're happy about that. Tracy Dunlop uh, is going thumbs up. Bruce, 2,270 subs. It's true. Uh, we were at 2,264 yesterday. And I just got to write that down on the sheet of paper. 2,270 subs is our number now. Uh, we're coming up to 2,300. And uh, uh, very thankful, of course, to all of you who are subbing to the channel and uh, loyally watching the shows and commenting and giving me thumbs ups and sharing my videos on YouTube. I mean, on uh, Facebook, excuse me. And any mentions that I'm getting on uh, Twitter and anywhere else, I appreciate it very much. I also appreciate the fact that some of you are buying these items here to help fund my channel and also uh, uh, the affiliate link I have for Amazon. I have an affiliate link with Amazon. The code is just below here in the description. You hit that, you go to the homepage of Amazon and if you buy something, I get a finder's fee. And thank you for everyone who's been doing that. Uh, I really appreciate it. Wendy Thompson, hello everyone. Thunder may get some rain and uh, rain 90 in Ocala right now. Oh, does that sound good to say? <laughs> She's a new resident in Florida. We have a new Floridian. Have to go back and pack so we can move uh, home here. New life and adventures ahead of us. So, uh, Wendy, uh, you know, you got to just finish that packing and unpacking, and uh, now you'll become an Ocala, Ocal an Ocalian. I don't know what do you what do you call yourself there? An Ocalian, Floridian, Floridian for sure. And then Wendy can drive to cruise ports. There are there are cruises in her future, and that is fantastic, Wendy. Way to go, Richard C. Cruising is very affordable vacation for about two to three hundred per person per day. It includes food and uh, tips to boot. Uh, yeah, two hundred, three hundred, or less uh, can be substantially less than that. Stacy Waltrip, hey Bruce and everybody, seventy four and cloudy in Minnesota. Welcome, Stacy. Paul Willigus, Paul Willigus is here. Uh, hi, Bruce and all. Eighty eight feels like ninety eight here in Virginia. Humidity. And Jordan, hey Bruce and all. It's twenty two in Brisbane. Awesome pictures on Facebook. Uh, fantastic. I have now got a Facebook group page, Traveling with Bruce. I invite all of you to come on by to that Facebook group page. Just go to the Facebook search bar, enter Traveling with Bruce with two L's, and uh, it'll take you right to the group page. And uh, just, just click the button you want to become a member, and I'll automatically kick you in there. And you'll find photos and videos and stories from the addicted cruisers we have from this channel and friends of this channel. And I'm just thrilled. We're over 123 members now. Uh, I'm, I'm, that's fantastic. And uh, I posted a couple of photos this morning of New York uh, Harbor. Uh, I took a cruise with my wife out of Bayonne, New Jersey. And uh, I sent the, uh, I put those up today and uh, you guys can see them. Clifford, Clifford Thomas just sent me 10 bucks on, pay, on PayPal. Thank you Clifford for your donation. Um, in, in the past, I've, I've, I've made a big deal about getting donations on my channel here through uh, YouTube, um, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, see, I don't even talk about it anymore. And uh, I far prefer any donations come to PayPal because 94% of it lands in my account and it's instantaneous. Whereas on Super Chat, that's it. Super Chat, YouTube Super Chat takes up to six weeks to get. I only get 70% of it. And YouTube still isn't monetizing this channel. And so I'm just not talking about the Super Chat channel as, as a way to go. If you, you any of you folks want to send me a donation, I appreciate it very much. Just do it on my PayPal and I get it right away. And it's 94%. Uh, YouTube doesn't get anything, but that's too bad for them. If they would like to monetize this channel, they can get 45% of the advertising action. But they don't seem to want to do that right now. It's, uh, it's the delays, the delays, the delays drives me nuts. What can I say? Let's move on. Desi Wagner, hi, Bruce and all at 70 and breezy with rain off and on in Chicago. I love that town, Chicago. And 70, you can handle that temperature, no problem. I'm uh, glad you're back, Desi. Say hi to everybody in Chicago for me and tell them to subscribe. Um, Cam, too many cruise ships? That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's impossible. There can't be too many. No, no, no. There's not enough passengers. But the cruise ship, they, they can have plenty Oh, uh, man, Stacy. initially the problem with the Magic was a medical emergency on last week's cruise that caused them to return to Cozumel and then the mechanical problem while trying to make up the time. Yeah, I read that too, Stacy. that they had a medical emergency you know, earlier and then they got back to home port. And then they found that there was a problem at home port uh, or, or probably going back home. 
And I'm wondering, well, technical, mechanical, what is it? Uh, is it a drive shaft? Is it a software problem? Is it a, who knows? So well, we'll find out if they uh, get this repaired. Um, just very, very surprised they made Saint, uh, that they made St. Thomas because they gave everybody apparently a shipboard credit saying, sorry, we can't make it to St. Thomas. And here they are this morning, a little late, but they made it. Very interesting. Uh, Desi uh, getting cool over there. And uh, Scott Weber, hi, Bruce, is 65 and overcast and cloudy. And Palos Verdes, uh, Scott, welcome back. 65, a little cool, but uh, not, you know, intolerable. But uh, still, uh, Palos Verdes, California, nice place. Robert Brandt is here. St. Thomas really needs all the help it can get until they reopen the larger hotels. Robert, you're right. Uh, St. Thomas got devastated uh, with the hurricanes, Maria and um, Irma. They just got flattened over there. And uh, the amount of help that went in was substantial. Of course, uh, FEMA will put people in there. I think they even chartered a cruise ship. Uh, one of the cruise ships that it's an old carnival ship that uh, they used now uh, for the Bahama, the Bahama run. Uh, they put that thing in there for three months to house these FEMA people because there's nowhere, nowhere to put them in uh, St. Thomas to help re St. Thomas rebuild. I know that the uh, airport in St. Thomas, the uh, radar systems, that was operated by uh, the U.S. military. Uh, it was a group of, of uh, uh, people from uh, Kansas. From Can they flew them in from Kansas with the portable uh, radar units and everything else to until they rebuilt the existing ones. They had to bring in all the parts and all the people, all the specialists. Man, the dollars that uh, that were spent and and uh, you know the rush the rush work that had to be done to get everything up and running again it was just truly phenomenal. Uh, they got the port open. That's true. Uh, people can go to St. Thomas. That's right. But go into town and uh, get off the main right, main commercial roadway and head in a few blocks you'll still see the devastation and uh, it's going to take a few years and those big hotels like you said all destroyed all damaged in in, in so many ways same thing with saint martin so much damage it's going to take all this year to rebuild and hurricane season is upon us now crossing our fingers that they won't get hit with another one this year and hopefully these repairs will be uh, will be able to be made robert welcome to the show if you're here for the first time welcome uh if you're a returnee welcome back uh, fantastic. And Jordan, oh yes, Desi, uh, oh yes, Desi, winter is here. <laughs> That's in Australia. Poor Anne, uh, poor Anne she's uh, experiencing the beginning of winter. She's in the low 20s now in Celsius. She's around 70 degrees. Winter, oh, it's harsh, harsh. Jim Thomas, hey gang, 100 plus in Anderson, California today. Yuck, Jim, hang in there, stay indoors, work that knee back and, uh, and uh, keep recovering. Unbelievable, buddy. Desi, that's still shorts weather over here. Uh, that's right. Chicago, 70 degrees. Oh, man, that, we're golfing. We're swimming. We're kayaking. We're on Lake Michigan wave board. We're having a great old time. And Jordan, wow, you're so lucky. <laughs> Jim Thomas, who's Ann? <laughs> Ann is from Australia. Brisbane, Australia, I believe. Uh, Cam, by the way, I just got back from my cruise yesterday, and I'm extra depressed. <laughs> I had such a good time. I didn't want to leave. I'm telling you, Cam, you, this is what happens. Withdrawal. It's just severe when you're hooked on cruising, man. It's it's bad. It can be bad. Yeah, you got to come to a place like this and help you through it. We'll try to help you through it, buddy. <laughs> Bob Hollis, Magic is running normal schedule. They were in um, uh, DR yesterday, uh, Dominican Republic, you're saying? Headed to San Juan tomorrow. So uh, this schedule is all screwed up. Uh, I was told that I was given the official rundown from Carnival on uh, Saturday. I read about it or Sunday. So, uh, Bob, I'm not sure what's going on uh, with with the ship now. Um, it's quite quite interesting. Elizabeth, uh, cooking supper and listening in Daytona. Elizabeth, how are you? Nice to have you back again. Nice to have you on the channel. And uh, hope supper's good tonight. Uh, Stacy uh, is saying hi, Desi. Wendy Thompson, a Floridian. I guess living here was something I wanted to do for years. Yeah. You're a Floridian now. That's right. Um, let's see. Imogene is here. Hey, Bruce and everyone. Hot and raining here in Houston, Texas. Uh, still warm with the rain. But welcome, Imogene. Uh, Sylvia, it's just hot. Greensboro. It's just it's just hot. That's all there's to it. That's what she said. Uh, my goodness. You mean Super Chat. Thanks, Jim Thomas. I got stuck on the Super Chat thing. I couldn't say it. Uh, it's cool, Jess. Hello, Bruce. Sunny, hot, 90 in the apple. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, that time of year, too, for New York to heat up. Uh, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, it's all going to get hot now. And, of course, in the big city, you got the sun beating on the pavement, and that just radiates the heat even more. Welcome back, Cool Jazz. Tom Henry, oh, I just got an email. My mom 
my my mom's clock has shipped. Uh, sh oh, great! That's the uh, the uh, wall clock you ordered on my on my site. I think you ordered the uh, Moonscape. Beautiful. I got an I got a message the other day that they were putting it together. Fantastic, Tom. Can't wait for you to get it. Uh, Imogene, uh, there should be a few more ports added or repositioning to the lesser used ones. Uh, well, uh, we'll see, uh, Imogene. You know, these big mega ships. The, this is the issue with uh, with the larger ships now. The Bliss and uh, the Getaway and the Epic and the the Oasis class, which are our four. Uh, these ships are so huge, they cannot go into the smaller ports. They have to have either use tender or they have to have special port facilities built for them. Now, there are Caribbean countries who are eagerly building out their port facilities to handle the Oasis class of ships. But uh, our friends at Royal Caribbean, they've also figured something else out. They figured out that, you know, we don't necessarily have to go to uh, St. Thomas or San Martin or or Granada or Curacao. What we could do is we could take over some islands and put our own resorts, these day resorts on these islands, which is what they're doing in Coco Cay and in Labadee. And we'll just build our own port that can handle our own Oasis class ships. As a matter of fact, we'll build ports, uh, piers that can handle two at a time. And we'll drop in the uh, harmony of the seas and the allure of the seas. We'll drop in a couple of those in one day. And we'll have 10, 12,000 passengers hit the water park over here, hit our beach and rent those cabanas. And uh, we'll have the weddings over here. And we'll have the kids in the wave pools. We'll have those water slides going. And we can charge extra for all these amenities. And it's all our territory these passengers all twelve thousand of them for the whole day they're on our property they're not spending money with anybody else but us and we've got this market cornered and hey works for this cruise line why not and we won't have to go to uh you know grenada or or to uh to uh dominican republic or maybe we won't do roatan or or other spots we'll we'll divert cruises going forward to our own properties where we control the entire cash flow, the market, and uh, the bean counters at head office are saying, boss, this is a good idea. We should put $200 million into Coco K and really beef it up and uh, keep the money for ourselves. Rather than have these passengers get off the ship and just disperse into wherever, uh, we don't get any of that money. We, the only money we can get if we get them into uh, get them to St. Martin or St. Thomas or whatever, the only money we can get off of these passengers is if we put them on a tour bus, uh, which you know we we sold the tour to them. But if only a third of the passengers take a tour that are sponsored by us, the other two thirds are walking off the ship and spending money out who knows where. We'll just corner the market and keep them in Coco Cay. Okay. So this is uh, also happening, and. Uh, it's an interesting thing to watch. Uh, Carnival bought a railroad last week in Alaska, the Skagway Railway deal. If you want to take the railway ride out of Skagway, you're now going to do it on a Carnival-owned railroad run by the company up there that Carnival, of course, is uh, contracted. But it's now the whole thing is owned by Carnival, and Carnival bought the docks and the piers in Skagway. They run that now. And so Carnival... Royal uh, Holland America, Princess Cruise Lines, Cunard, Costa, all those ships, those lines get to use those ports. They're all Carnival owned, whereas Royal Caribbean or Norwegian will have to pay Carnival to use the, the pier. Interesting developments there. So things are happening in the cruise business behind the scenes here. Lots going on. Uh, Wendy Thompson, uh, winter is bad. It's just, it's just bad. <laughs> Hey all, 20, 93 in Hilton Head Island, Blaine 2007 saying, welcome back Blaine 2007, nice to have you pal. Stacy, after a Minnesota winter 40 Fahrenheit is t-shirt weather. You got it Stacy, that is, put the shorts on and practice your putting, absolutely. <laughs> Cam, uh, exactly, and the cruise withdrawal is always really bad for me, I'm glad I have this support group here. Cam, we're here for you buddy, we're here. And Jordan, I feel you, Wendy. Burr, so cold. Uh, Tammy, uh, hello, everyone. 25 Celsius in Calgary. Tammy Ray from Calgary, Alberta. Welcome, Tammy, to the show. Welcome back. Uh, Chevy and First is here from, I believe, uh, 
Uh, is it Atlanta? Chevy first. Hey, y'all, 94 here in my house. 96 to gay, days to go before my first cruise. I just joined a Facebook cruise for my cruise. I'm so excited. That's great stuff. You can compare notes before you get on. And Jordan, hey, Tammy, cold in Calgary. Uh, Tammy, 25 Celsius. That's kind of hot here for us. That's warm. And Jordan, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Tracy, total opposite to our weather. <laughs> Randy Lucas, Bruce, I speak from experience when I say that it matters not if I'm on a cruise of 3, 7, 14, 21, or 31 days uh, till I get depressed when it's over. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're on a short cruise, a long cruise, or a bunch of back-to-back. -back. When you get off that ship, it's it's depression setting in. It's terrible. I agree, Randy. And Jordan, oh, Cam, cruise withdrawals are the worst. Tracy, <laughs> yeah, man. When I watched the Australian Open in January, that's your summer. That's right. That's true. Well, today's topic that I was going to bring up today was I did some research on vacationstogo.com, which is uh, the site I like to use to kind of check cruise prices. And I, I thought I'd, I'd make up a topic today uh, because people ask me all the time about living full time on a cruise ship. And uh, I thought today I would address the idea of living full time. But in this case, it would be kind of like a three month deal. And I thought, what about wintering on a cruise ship? for one time, just doing it one time, how affordable could it be? But then I, I'm particular. I'm, 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 I've got certain needs. I know that if I were to go to vacationstogo.com and look for the cheapest cruise, the cheapest cruises available for any cruise line, I'm going to be looking at a, a Pullman Tour cruises, uh, which is a three and a half star kind of line. Um, but I, I, don't want to do that. I want to. I want kind of the nice neighborhood. I want to be in kind of like a Manhattan, at a New Jersey price, <laughs> for my friend Cool Jazz. And uh, I thought today, why don't I take a look at the brand new ship that just came out from Carnival, the Horizon, just brand new. It's got almost about four thousand capacity. It's getting rave reviews. It's got all the amenities. It's got the guys' burger joint on there. It's got. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, amenities, the rides, the, the the water rides. It's got uh, uh, mini golf, splash zone, uh, everything new, brand new ship, getting nice reviews. And I thought, is it possible to go on a cruise ship like that, a brand new ship, on the cheap uh, for the whole winter? And I thought, let's let's say winter starts January the sixth, because in my world, uh, uh, relating to it for me myself. My wife, Jennifer, the Jennifer Aniston lookalike wife that I have, uh, there's no way she'd let me go on a cruise starting in December because Christmas is coming. Got to be with the family for Christmas. So I thought, oh, so avoid all that discussion. Why don't we start the calendar on January the 6th and let's grab January, February, and March as the three winter months to go on a cruise. Because when I used to live in Palm Desert, California, I was renting a condo on a golf course uh, gated place. And uh, uh, I knew that as a full-time renter, I was there year round. I knew that uh, in the summertime, five to 10% of those units were being used. I knew that five, only 5% 5 of the units were lived in full-time and the rest were being you know used as a family vacation place or were being rented out from time to time. And I also knew that, that even at the height of the season, like, uh, like Thanksgiving, U.S. Thanksgiving, Half the units, maybe 60% were being used. The other 40% are still empty. It's incredible. Uh, so during the winter, of course, January, February, March, uh, that's when these units were rented out the most. And I would say 40 to 50% of the condos were being used through those three months. Uh, a lot of the owners who owned those units would never rent them. They would only keep them for the family, for themselves, and they would only use them one or two months a year. And the rest of the year, they'd be fully furnished and nobody in them. Um, on a cruise ship, I'm thinking, well, okay, those three months are the big winter months for vacations at resorts, uh, condos in, in California or, or wherever you want to winter, uh, all inclusives down in Mexico. And I thought, what kind of a deal could I find on, on a brand new ship for a three month deal? And I came up with this deal here. I found these cruises on the horizon. And so, um, I checked it out. And uh, the Carnival Horizon is going um, out of Miami, and um, it will be running a six-day cruise followed by an eight-day cruise followed by a six-day cruise. The six-day cruises 
are going to uh, Oco Rios, Grand Cayman, and Cozumel. And there's a couple of sea days in there making up the entire six-day cruise. The eight-day cruises, of which there are also six, are divided into two itineraries. One itinerary takes you from Miami and you end up in Grand Turk, Dominican Republic, Curacao, and Aruba. And the uh, then you follow that with a six-day cruise. Then the next eight-day cruise, it goes from Miami to St. Martin to St. Kitts, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Grand Turk, back to Miami. And so I added it up. There's a total of 10 ports that you would visit over 12 cruises for a total of 84 days, January the 6th till March 31. And uh, I looked at the pricing of the inside room and I thought, just do it on the cheap. Uh, don't look at the balcony, look at the cheapest deal. And I added up the cost of the fares uh, for the inside rooms and it came out to $7,409. Add to that your port charges and your uh, taxes and that type of thing, $1,536. And then I added the cost of tips at $12.95 a day, approximately $1,092 extra dollars. So all those together, you have to pay, or you should have to pay, $10,037. Now, the tipping is always optional. This is a suggested per day charge. I always include it in my calculations. I cannot imagine not paying the tips to these folks working their tails off for my enjoyment. And for $1,092 for 84 days of putting up with me, I think they earn it. Uh, some probably should get even more. But basically, I came up with $10,037. Now, the cruises themselves come up with, uh, they have cabin credits, a $50 cabin credit they're offering now uh, for each week. So on a per person basis, I divided that in half because that's for the cabin, not for a, for two people, but for, for uh, it is for two. So divide it in half. Uh, it's $300 cabin credits. Um, and then I decided I would use the calculation if I were a shareholder of the company. If I own 100 shares of Carnival stock, I get the shareholder credit on these cruises as well. On the six-day cruises, it's a $50 uh, cabin credit. And on the eight-day cruises, it's a $100 cabin credit. And so per person, that works up to an additional $450 in credits. And so I decided, well, that's 750 bucks between them. I'll take that off. And uh, it comes down, it brings that $10,000 number down to 9287 Because your credits can be used towards tipping and any other charges you have. So I thought, well, if you, if you just use it towards tipping, that's the 750 of the 1092 And uh, you're only now coming up with 340 bucks for the tips. Okay. Well, you divide that 9287 figure into the 84 day uh, time frame here, we're coming up with 110 bucks a day. And if you just multiply 110 by a typical month of about 30 days, in January, February, March, it would come out to 30 day months. You're coming up with $3,300 a month all in. So for 3,300 bucks per person, you're on a cruise ship, brand new cruise ship in the Caribbean, from January, February, and March, and you can spend extra. Of course, you can pay more by hitting the specialty restaurants, by drinking alcohol, uh, buying a drink package if you so wish. I don't know why you do it. Um, but I looked at this and went, you know, do you really need a drink card? Uh, think about it. Uh, you're in Miami every week. Um, you know, you can get off the ship. You'll meet people on the ship, of course, who will be fascinated by the fact that you're on there for 12 cruises in a row. Uh, you'll meet Floridians. Who will, who will more than more than likely say, you want to ride to the Costco? Because uh, I know you're going back to the cruise ship after that's done. Uh, I got a friend of mine coming to pick us up. Uh, we'll take you to the Costco, and then you just take a cab back. Yeah, you're good to go. But even if you had to pay for a cab, so what? You grab a cab and uh, hit to the local shopping area where the nearest Costco is and uh, pick up two bottles of wine, one for yourself and one for your uh, companion, in my case, Jen, and they both be for Jen. <laughs> And pick up some cola, some cheap cola, or go to the local Walmart and shop there for wine and, and, and cola as well. And any other snacks that you want, chocolate bars or whatever that you don't want to pay for on the cruise. And to get yourself some sunscreen. If you're running low on sunscreen, find yourself a new pair of flops if they're running out, whatever. And you're back on your cruise to leave again that evening from Miami. And then I thought, geez, you know, you cause them hell every second week. This six-day pattern, you got an eight-day cruise, a six-day cruise. Well, every time you have a six-day cruise, 
you end up in Cozumel. Well, in Cozumel, that's where you buy your meds. <laughs> you got your prescription from your doctor for your blood pressure pills or whatever you need to take, cholesterol pills. You buy them in Cozumel and you pay the Mexican prices. Uh, and if Cozumel is too much, you take the uh, ferry from Cozumel over to uh, Cancun and you buy them there. I mean, you'll get your deal for meds. And I thought, if I had a cavity that needed filling in the, you know, in that three months, I'd get my teeth done. In, I'd get my uh, dental done in, in Mexico. Absolutely. I'll pay a fraction of the price, maybe a quarter of the price that I would pay in the U.S. So there's, there, there's those advantages. Now, as far as the alcohol goes, you know you're going to be uh, at four, you have four day stops on your cruise for the eight day cruise. Buy your booze on shore at the local bar you're going to head up because you're going to get used to these places. You're going to be in uh, Oco Rios every second cruise. You're going to be in Grand Cayman. You're going to be in Cozumel. So you, you might as well uh, uh, enjoy yourself at those spots. Uh, Grand Turk, Dominican Republic, Curacao and Aruba, uh, all kinds of beachfront bars and, uh, and places to enjoy. St. Martin, there's a, there are a whole bunch of places to enjoy yourself in St. Martin. St. Kitts, oh yeah. Uh, San Juan, USA prices. Uh, you can get a $2 beer in San Juan uh, at the corner store <laughs> in Grand Turk. Uh, so uh, you really don't need to uh, worry about uh, uh, expensive alcohol. Now, if you insist on getting hammered on board your cruise ship, well, God bless you for it. But, you, you know, when you're on here for 84 straight days, you're not in a hurry to get blitzed on board the cruise. You, you know that every second day you're on shore and you can enjoy yourself at a, uh, at a sports bar or, or a Hooters or a Senior Frogs or whichever. You'll find your favorites and you'll frequent them and you're good to go. Internet, come on! You'll take a day off from the internet. Turn your phone off and uh, take your phone off the, the ship with you. And when you head into uh, into town, into San Juan, you'll go to a place where they have internet. Buy a beer and you get you get the code. And then if you want to talk to people on the phone, use WhatsApp on your telephone on the internet. It's all Wi-Fi. Or use um, use Skype. Uh, or uh, of course, uh, uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, being USA. Talk to your phone provider, your cell phone provider for a deal, and you'll probably be able to get San Juan included for a pretty cheap price for you know, so much a minute or what have you, unlimited texting and whatnot. You'll figure this out. You'll become very proficient at uh, lowering your cost and uh, knowing, oh, tomorrow I'm going to be in uh, such and such. I'm gonna, I can use the internet there. Not a problem. Uh, this is a way to go. This is a way to take advantage of this. Familiarity uh, lets you understand you don't have to buy a whole bunch of stuff on board that cruise ship at cruise ship prices. You can save money doing it this way. I got comments coming in like crazy. I better catch up on these, see what everyone's saying here. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, and Jordan, oh, Cam, those cruise withdrawals are the worst. Tracy, yep, and when I watch the Australian Open, uh, it's uh, in January. That's your summer. Debbie, hi, Ann. Hi, Bruce. Says it'll be 97 today. Yuck, Debbie, welcome back. Nice to have you. Uh, trivia tonight, 8 o'clock. Looking forward to that. Uh, let's see here. Everyone's saying hi to everybody. And Wendy, uh, Chevy, enjoy the whole cruise. Once you go, you want to go on and do more. Absolutely right. Nina, hi, everybody. Just woke up from the couch here in Windy, Sweden. Welcome back, uh, Nina, from Sweden today. Uh, everyone's saying hi there. Uh, Sylvia, welcome back, Cam. Uh, where did you go on your cruise? And what ship were you on? Randy uh, saying hi, everybody. Cam. I went to Key West and Cozumel on the Carnival Sensation. It was nice, although it rained all day at Cozumel. I still enjoyed it. It's a warm rain. No warm rain. It's okay. Uh, Sylvia uh, is uh, saying, hi, Debbie. Uh, how many more days? I think for Debbie, isn't it 11 days? Uh, I'm not sure. And Jordan, awesome, Cam. Did you see, uh, did you use the fun to the, uh, fun to the uh, pass? Uh, did you do first to the fun pass uh, on Carnival? Um, was it good? Uh, Debbie is saying, hi, Randy, back in time. Yucky heat wave. Richard C. Bruce, why not a world cruise? Leaves in January. Cunard has a 50 day for $59.99. And then add tips and port charges. Uh, 50 days, six grand, uh, 120 bucks a day. Uh, you know, uh, plus plus. Um, so you'd be about 150, 160. Yeah, uh, nothing wrong with that either. I mean, I'm I'm not poo-pooing anyone else. <laughs> I'm only making this example because I was thinking about this uh, this idea of living full time on a cruise ship. People could have home withdrawal. Uh, it might be home country withdrawal. It might be friends withdrawal. I don't know. And I thought about that going, you know, 
if I was going to do this kind of a deal here, uh, 12 consecutive cruises, January, February, and March, um, I'd let all my friends and relatives know about it. And I bet you that I would have friends and relatives book a cruise uh, somewhere on this itinerary. They'd be booking a week here and a week there. Some will book, you know, this uncle, aunt and uncle will book the fourth week that we're on. A uh, buddy of mine with his wife will come down on the eighth week that we were on. And I bet you I won't be lonely. I, I'm certain that uh, I, I might be on this ship for 12 straight cruises with my wife. But I'll bet you of those 12 weeks, four, five, six of them, there will be friends on board where we won't be alone. We'll be the tour guides for these guys. And we'll be taking them on the shore excursions because we know the shore excursions now. We've been, you know, we've been to Oco Rios three times. We know where to go. Come with us. You don't have to take the tour. Uh, we, we'll, we got something to take you to. We know what to avoid. We know what we want to do. Uh, same thing with Grand Cayman. Uh, when we get to Cayman Islands, we're going to rent a car and we're going to drive around that island, the four of us. We'll split the cost of the car between the four of us and we'll have a great old time. It's going to be fantastic. We'll bring home some rum cake from Tortuga Rum Company. The rum cake company, we know exactly what to do, where to go, where to shop. Uh, whereas if you're doing around the world or a partial around the world, it, you're just going further away, further away, further away, further away, unless you're flying all the way to the ship and coming all the way back by the, with ship. Fair enough. But the opportunity for your friends to visit you won't happen unless you don't want to be visited. And I get that too. Uh, but here, this experiment about having the winter on a cruise ship, if it's a first time experience, uh, you may find, geez, you know, uh, we, we, will we feel marooned? On a cruise ship, the first two cruises, three cruises will be okay, but after that, won't we be won't we be bored with it? Won't we be lonely? Won't we miss home? I don't think so because I have a feeling January, February, March, all your pals, especially from northern North America, they're gonna want to visit you guys. <laughs> they're gonna want to hang on that brand new cruise ship you're on the uh, the horizon, and they're gonna want to try those guys' burgers. Uh, I don't think you're gonna be lonely at all. But that 50-day cruise looks pretty good, Richard. Uh, Debbie, hi, Sylvia. 11 days till embarkation day. I was right. 11 days for Debbie. And then she's on the Norwegian Bliss out of Seattle going to Alaska. Uh, Cam is saying, nah, I didn't use faster to the fun. But I got on the ship at a decent time, still due to my grandmother being able to use the handicapped facilities. But I did do the behind the tour, behind the fun tour. <laughs> right on, behind the fun tour. Uh, Jim Thomas uh yeah, Deb, you deserve it. Um, fantastic. And Jordan, uh, Debbie, awesome bliss. So go. Lots of pics on Facebook, please. Stacy uh, saying, uh, I sure, I'm sure being on the ship that long, you'd be able to come friends with the bartender who would probably treat you right. Absolutely. The staff are going to adopt you as one of their own. Everybody on the uh, in the restaurants, all the folks in the dining room, the guys uh, in the at the bars. Uh, yeah, you're going to know them all. And if you play your cards right. When you're on board the ship for dinner time in the dining room, get a table. Uh, if there's just the two of you and it's just, and there's no friends with you, get a table for eight and uh, join six other passengers. You may find that there are four couples, two, 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 and two, and you'll all start talking. And within five minutes, 10 minutes, those three other couples are going to figure out you're on 12 consecutive back-to-back -back cruises. Oh, they're going to have questions for you. <laughs> You're going to find that that at the next port of call, some of those folks are going to say, "Why don't we get together? Why don't we go on the port of call together? Why don't we go out to uh, go to Grand Cayman together or Grand Turk or whatever?" And uh, yeah, you, you're not you're hardly going to be lonely. You're going to be so busy entertaining and being entertained and hearing stories from so many people because every week new new people. Every week, you're hardly going to be bored with the same group. Only the crew and you are the same. Everyone else is practically different, although there will be a few folks who will do a couple of back-to-backs. It won't be many compared to you guys going back-to-back-to-back-to-back, to back to back to back, but that will be something. Uh, let's see here, Cam. I got to – and I got to meet the captain three times. It was amazing. This is fantastic on this, uh, uh, on this elation. Way to go, Cam. And saying, Iskew Park. Hi, Bruce and all. It's Iskew in Thunder Bay, Ontario. It's 25 degrees Celsius and sunny here. Sorry, I missed most of the show. First time you're telling me it's really warm up there. You're finally getting some decent warm weather. That's fantastic, Isku. You certainly deserve it. Uh, Sylvia to Cam, uh, back to reality. That's true. Uh, Tracy, can't beat that deal. The snowbirds that rent in Naples, six grand a month for winter months. 
That's right, Tracy. Uh, in Palm Desert, where, where I lived, uh, at the Monterey Golf and Country Club, where I was in, uh, we were renting on an annual basis. Now, this is going back now nine, ten years. And uh, we were paying under 2000 a month for the condo, but we were there all year. So, you know, we got the so-called annual deal, where the folks that we saw in January, right till April, they're paying at least 4000 a month. Um, some got away with maybe 3000 a month if they took five consecutive months and they paid 15 grand up front, they'd get a deal. But uh, those out there who were renting, you know, one month at a time and the minimum rental for a two bedroom condo was one month. They weren't interested in one week rentals, not these guys. They wanted at least a month and they wanted a thousand a week, 4,000 bucks. But you still had to eat. You still had to go to the grocery store or if you want to go out, you know, you're only down in Palm Desert for one month of the year. Uh, you're not going to have home cooked meals every night. You're going to want to sample some of the restaurants, and there are some fantastic restaurants in the valley, as we used to call it, between Palm Desert and La Quinta and uh, Indian Wells and Rancho Mirage. Just oh man, you want to you talk about food? Whew, fantastic food! But some of these restaurants, <clears throat> high end stuff. You're talking five, six star dining. You're talking top of the line dollars um, on top of your four thousand uh, dollar unit. If you drove down, at least you had your car. But if you flew down, you rented a car for the whole month. So add that to your your pricing. Um, and any other entertainment you want to do, want to go to a movie or, or uh, drive to L.A. and spend some money shopping, there you go. So some of these folks were really dropping 6000 7000 for the month, 8000 for the month, one month, uh, 8000 uh, But they, had, they did it right. They were golfing, playing tennis, um, hiking, uh, Riding bikes, having a great time. Um, here on this cruise ship, 110 bucks a night per person, all in. That's a value. That's actually a value deal. Plus, you're traveling the Caribbean, 10 different ports of call. Uh, you don't like Oco Rios? Stay on the ship next time. Don't get off. You're on the Carnival Horizon. You got plenty to take care of, to take care of you and what you need to do. Just hang out by the pool or enjoy the other amenities of the brand new cruise ship, you're good to go. Good deal. Randy Lucas, Debbie E. Yep, it was 106 degrees on one of my days in Mexico. That's uh, that, not on a Mocos motorcycle for sure. Oh, that is hot, Randy. That's too hot. Uh, I, Cam was saying, I know, Sylvia, I don't really like it. Uh, I don't uh, like that reality at all. Debbie, uh, Randy, that heat requires ice packs and motorcycle pants. <laughs> Especially if they're black leather pants. Oh, man. Hot on a motorcycle, Randy saying, oh, I guess. Tom Henry, Bruce is playing with my lights. Power is out. Storms are coming. Thanks to uh, thanks to traveling with Bruce. <laughs> Tom Henry to the 100 degrees. Um, my goodness. Uh, uh, laughing my ass off. Randy's going, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, same with Ann Jordan. Scott Batchley. Uh, hi, everybody. Nice again. in Ventura 68 and a cool breeze. Nice weather in uh, in, uh, in Ventura. Nice going, Scott. Uh, Michelle, uh, Lucas, Deb, I uh, hope you can chat with all of us in Alaska. Seaplanes, uh, trains, and wildlife fun. Woohoo! Uh, yeah, we're looking forward to Debbie's reports. Hopefully, she can give us some. And Jordan, I agree, Michelle. That would be amazing. Wendy, uh, uh, Wales, Deb, hope you see some. Debbie Emanuel, I, I sure hope to, uh, Michelle. I plan on it anyway. Uh, Debbie, that would be a coolie. That would be coolie. Uh, Richard C. Bruce, for you, wouldn't be cheaper to do the Mexican back-to-back, uh, -to -back, leaving uh, uh, San Francisco or L.A. and still have the warm weather and not worry about hurricanes. Uh, you know, it's funny, Richard. Um, this past winter, I was looking at uh, the pricing out of L.A., Long Beach, uh, for Mexican cruises. No deals. Uh, the uh, the um, there just weren't any serious bargains this year. In past years, I'd seen Princess Cruises uh, in the seven hundreds for a balcony out of uh, L.A. And uh, this year, I was not finding deals at all. Um, it's just uh, the demand is higher. The ships aren't big enough, uh, and that's why they are making changes because uh, Carnival is uh, going to move the Splendor. Uh, into dry dock uh, once the panorama comes out, the brand new panorama, which will be the size of the horizon, 4,000 passengers versus about 3,200. So they're going to increase the uh, weekly uh, uh, count out of Long Beach by 800 cabins or 800 people, I should say, uh, per week. Um, the uh, the uh, folks at Princess, I think they're bringing in a new ship as well. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, how many uh, 
you know, how long it takes for LA to add additional capacity because this past winter, the capacity was down. Um, I don't even think uh, Norwegian uh, sales to uh, Mexico at all out of LA. I don't think so. Uh, the uh, the uh, cruises to uh, to Hawaii uh, for years there haven't been a there hasn't been a killer deal to Hawaii for a while now because again in the past uh, 10, 12 years ago and beyond, Princess wasn't owned by Carnival, uh, Holland America wasn't owned by Carnival. Uh, Norwegian was its own brand trying to survive. Uh, Carnival was its own brand. Uh, Holland America was its own brand. And they were at each other's throats to get the business. And so uh, deals out of Frisco, deals out of LA, deals out of uh, Long Beach, out of San Diego to Hawaii were common. Uh, you could get $1,000 balcony rides for 14 days to uh, Hawaii and back. Um, there were some real bargains at that time. And then the Mexican deals were really good too. But then uh, the consolidation took place where uh, Carnival took over Princess. They took over Hall in America, uh, got Cunard as well. Um, and of course, uh, um, uh, Norwegian got salvaged and saved. And eventually uh, uh, the group, uh, um, Mercury uh, Inv Investment Group, big private venture funds, stepped in and put billions into um, Norwegian allowed Norwegian to modernize and, and then become a public standalone company. Uh, Norwegian now runs a very tight ship compared to what they had before. Um, there, these cruise lines don't compete head to head for the same dates for the same uh, cruises, and so you, you cannot, you know, haggle uh, or look for super killer deals out of the West Coast right now uh, for Hawaii or for uh, for uh, Alaska for uh, uh, Mexico cruises now Alaska. I'm a little ahead of myself, but Alaska Cruise is a different story. This year, there are a record number of cruise ships, record number of cabins available for Alaska Cruises. So out of Seattle and out of Vancouver, man, can you get some good deals. Now, on the Bliss, no. Uh, it's the first year. Bliss is practically sold out. Every cruise to Alaska this summer, uh, very tough to get a killer price on a, on, a, uh, on a Bliss Cruise. But Princess Cruises out of Vancouver. Oh my, can you get wonderful deals. 350 bucks for a week this summer. You want to go, I was saying a couple of weeks ago, you want to go for six or eight or 10 back-to-back -back cruises up to uh, Anchorage and back, one week up, one week back. Between Alaska, uh, between uh, Princess and Holland America and uh, Norwegian, uh, there's deals. There are deals because tons of cruise ships, limited number of ports, uh, going up and coming back, uh, they're looking for business. And the the Bliss got all the premium money. They got the top dollar money, brand new ship. Uh, but everyone else is going after the rest. And so, yeah, there's some deals there. But uh, not out of L.A. for uh, for Mexico. Uh, Michelle Lucas, well, I say maybe hubby Randy would send me away for a month at that price. He could stay home and say and save for another cruise. Well, there you go. You see, Michelle, you grab a girlfriend. Whose husband is dying to get rid of her too? <laughs> well, not that we're saying that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, you know, speculating. Uh, but you know, maybe the hubbies want to play golf and hang out together. And and uh, one way to do it is to get the wives on a cruise with the prices as they are out of Alaska for Alaska out of Vancouver. Maybe that's a good idea. You know, the wives can get away from the husbands. The was the husbands can get get the wives out of the picture for a while, and you know, everyone's happy for a while. I, I don't know. I'm just saying. Just wondering, uh, Suzanne Hoffman, how you doing, Suzanne? Debbie, uh, may have missed it. Which ship are you on? She's on the Bliss, Norwegian Bliss out of Seattle. Scott Batchley, the Bliss will be uh, doing Mexico out of Long Beach for a while after the Alaska season. Yeah, that's right, Scott. I haven't seen, like, really cheap deals uh, either, but uh, we'll have to see how that goes. And then, of course, the Bliss will go through the Panama Canal and uh, work out of, I think, Miami for the Caribbean season. Uh, Tom Henry, I would, uh, I would like doing the Norwegian Jewel. Uh, from Vancouver to Japan, very reasonable rates. Um, yeah, they'll have that's a repositioning cruise, and uh, you'll find a way back home from there, or you travel onwards from Japan. I, I would love that. Uh, I'd love to do a cruise to Japan, a repo cruise, then fly from there to perhaps uh, Hong Kong, and uh, from Hong Kong either uh, find a cruise out of there or uh, fly on uh, uh, fly on Emirates to uh, Dubai. And uh, maybe fly from Dubai into Europe and grab a cruise back to uh, back to uh, North America if that's doable. We could do a repositioning from Vancouver to Japan, plane it to Europe, a little bit of stop, a couple stops on the way, obviously, 
and then a repo cruise from Europe back to Miami or Florida, Fort, La Fort Lauderdale, that, or Fort Lauderdale or Port Canaveral. That'd be a pretty cool trip around the world. That'd be around the world. Neat. Um, Debbie Manuel, Suzanne taking the NCL bliss. Tommy Eden. Hi, Bruce and all. 90 degrees and storms in Jacksonville, Florida. Tommy, welcome back to the show today. You're a little late, but welcome here. Uh, 90 and, and uh, storms, uh, stay indoors, stay cool, and uh, drive out that humidity. Uh, Jim Thomas, okay, gang, got a question for you. How do you use the shower heads uh, when you have multiple shower heads on the cruise ship bathroom? That way you don't uh, have just the top to get, <laughs> you get the side jets and all that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh jim you know uh i i think it's a it's a matter of uh of trial and error uh you first thing you do is you run the water and make sure that the water coming out is warm so that when you do experiment with all those knobs <laughs> the water coming at you is warm and tolerable you don't want to be doing it right off the get-go with cold water because you know that's when you're doing the dance and you want to be doing that uh, I'm guessing that's how I would uh, how I would uh, play that angle. Uh, you know, get in there and get the water warm, and 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 then just keep playing with those knobs until you find the combination that works, and then try to remember how you set it or or leave it like that, and hope the room steward doesn't change it on you. Uh, you know, after a while, you will get the hang of it. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> that's my that's my that's my suggestion to you, my friend. I I don't know. I can't go in there with you. Uh, I can only suggest uh, your traveling companion, uh, you know, m m Mrs. Mrs. Jim, you know, uh, maybe have her in there with you. And between the two of you, you'll figure that out. And who knows what will happen after that. I, I, I'm i not going there. I, I have no idea. Randy Lucas, hmm, put Michelle on a cruise for three months. Hmm. And I could take a motorcycle trip to South America. Hmm, there's all these possibilities. Are just bubbling up from everywhere. You, you, you know, one never knows. Now, Michelle, you know, you could do that, you know, three months of cruising, or, or you could just grab that big ass RV of yours and take it on the road with a girlfriend. And, uh, you know, Thelma Louise in a big old RV, you know, and Randy can go take the bike wherever he wants. So, you know, there's possibilities all around, I, I'm sure. <laughs> and Jordan, confusing. Uh, Jim, so many shower jets. Wow, it's so confusing. Ah, this is too much for me. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, Jim uh, quickly commented, uh, glad you're not going in the shower with me, bro. <laughs> Sorry, you know, I, don't, I don't want any part of it. Uh, you can tell me how it worked out uh, by all means. So you can send us a text or, you know, write us later. Let us know how did it work out for you by yourself. <laughs> Give us all advice. But I, I really no, I I can't no. I'm not interested in that. I it might make for a hell of a live cast. But wouldn't you think the live stream would really be kind of juiced up here if you know I was live on the air with my phone on the uh, YouTube channel, traveling with Bruce and showering with Jim Thomas on the multi head shower. Uh, Bruce and Jim trying to figure out the shower together. But uh, you know that might be limited interested viewing uh, as opposed to you know wide interested viewing. Plus, YouTube might just say, "Nah, uh -uh, we're we're not airing this." <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. Really, I just you know I'd rather just tell us how it worked out. Just just let us know. A text will suffice. We don't even have to send us photos. If you send us photos, just send me photos of the shower in operation with you not in it. Okay, like you're outside of the shower. No, no, uh, no mirror reflection shots. None of that. Just zoom in on the shower and show it in operation. Maybe that's enough. That's more, more than enough. I would say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Stacy, you say you gotta run. Take care, everybody. Catch you next time. See you, Stacy. Wendy Thompson, put uh, put Mrs. Jim and Mrs. Randy on the ship together. And there you go. Uh, Debbie saying, make the room steward get inside the shower and show how to use it. There you go. That's what the room steward is for. Randy Lucas saying, I, I just got a, I just got a mental picture of, uh, of uh, Jim Thomas, the Bean, Bruce, and I in the shower. My eyes, I'm blind. I'm blind. I'm losing my sight. Oh my gosh! Can you imagine the wives telling us to uh, uh, go on our own cruise and share a cabin? Do an inside cabin with uh, with uh, Jim Thomas, the Bean Bruce, and and uh, Randy Lucas, four guys inside cabin, trying to figure out how the shower works. 
Oh, no, I don't think so. I, that's too much skin for me. Way too much. <laughs> that's way too much. It's over. Over the top. I think I'd be blind just thinking about it. Oh, my God. Debbie Manuel laugh. Landy, I'm laughing my ass off. Uh, Debbie Manuel is loving it. Oh, gosh. Uh, Ann Jordan. Uh, <laughs> R.O.T. Flame all. Randy, the image. <laughs> it's just, it's just uh, way over the top here. Uh, PJ, here in Omaha, we are having fun hosting the College World Series. PJ, I'm glad to hear that, but I'm telling you right now, we're having fun talking about a multiple head shower and having four guys share an inside cab and trying to figure out how it works. <laughs> this is, we're on a whole other level here. Uh, Tom Henry sounds like fuel for the trolls. <laughs> I got uh, going with you there, Tom. <laughs> Jim Thomas. Hey, how did Bean get involved, Randy? Bean's always in on it. He's always in on it. He always involves himself. We, we can't, he can't help it. Uh, Tom Henry, Bruce's posse. <laughs> Oh, uh, Randy, JT, the bean is always involved. You have to understand that. You can't get rid of the bean. He's always part of it. I'm surprised he hasn't signed in yet. He's around the corner, I'm sure. He's working his way to the house, desperately trying to get to his home, oh, power up his laptop or his desktop to watch the show, find out what's going on. He's already part of the show. He doesn't even know it. Oh, my goodness. Paul Wuggers, just how big is the shower? <laughs> It's just how big, ah, how big is the shower? Four guys on an inside room uh, with a multiple shower head shower. How big is the shower? It just can't be good. It's just, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a reason I only use the showers in the uh, spa. I, I don't use showers uh, in the room. I leave the showers in the room to my better half, Jen. I leave the whole bathroom to her. Uh, that whole area just for herself. Uh, that's all fine with me. And and Jordan rolling on the floor laughing. My butt. <laughs> what they don't tell you on these cruise lines, you don't find this information on the uh, the pamphlets or on the material. If you ever go to the cruise line website, will you ever find information like this that you're learning here today? No, I think not. No, I don't think so. This is why this channel is so important for cruisers and non-cruisers alike. There are things you need to learn about cruising, uh, you know, just as, as a matter of, of safety and convenience. Uh, you, you just have to know the do's and the don'ts of cruising. And this is one of the don'ts <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. It's a no-no uh, deal here. Jim Thomas, how did we get so sideways? I... I was just thinking, I was just asking a serious question, asking a serious question about those multiple shower heads. I was just, you know, oh, the imagery, Tom, Jim, the imagery, Randy, the inside cabin is a wet bath. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> It's out of control. <laughs> You're losing me. Oh, I'm mentally scarred, Jim Tan. I am mentally scarred by this. Oh, Paul Wilgus laughing out loud. Randy Lucas. Sorry, JT. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> oh, I'm dying here. <laughs> I have nowhere to go and nowhere to hide. <laughs> Oh, it's all good, Jim is saying. It's all good. <laughs> I'll, I'll be all right. Oh, the mental imagery. You know, you got to just think about uh, Norwegian Cruise Line's um, webpage. You know, frequently asked questions, you know, and uh, the imagery, you know, frequently asked questions answered by photographs. <laughs> oh, my God, Paul Wilkins. But Randy, the bean is involved. Laugh out loud. Randy Lucas, I'm laughing so hard. I snorted. <laughs> I'm tearing up. I'm laughing so hard. I can't stand it. Uh, Tom Henry, I think you need a mini suite or above to get the multiple head showers inside your sort of luck. <laughs> I'm thinking in the on the inside, you know, on the basic, basic inside, all they're going to have is one of those handheld shower heads. Can you imagine that one? <laughs> you know, four guys trying to get a shower going here with, with a handheld unit. That's the, you know, the the whole shower head's like this big, you know, 
the cord, the, the cable on, what is it, four feet long for the tube? That don't, oh, my gosh, that would be just, oh, the steamer would have to be in the shower, and he'd just have to be shooting it at us from inside the shower stop. Yeah, that would be a wet bath, all right. That would be bad, <laughs> really bad. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, that, uh, that, uh, that couldn't be good. That just can't be good. No, no, no. no. I got to think of the inside room. If the inside room is located in the aft section of the ship, you know, in the middle aft, and there's four guys sharing an inside room there, and each guy is one biscuit short of a serious weight issue. You got to be wondering if that cruise ship is, is kind of riding like this, you know, the back end is kind of down and the front end is riding high. And the ship's going to have a heck of a time planing out uh, with all that weight on an inside room. Oh, man, that would be something. Crazy, Tom Henry. Uh, yeah, Tom, yeah, I think you need a, I think you need a mini suite or larger to handle. Uh, yeah, there's no one. <laughs> oh my goodness, the beaner. I don't know where the beaner is today, but oh, he's integral to this uh, discussion today. Gonna have to let him know uh, to catch up with the show and definitely check in when Jim Thomas asked the innocent question. Uh, wasn't it Jim? Yeah, I think it was Jim. Uh, Jim was asking an innocent question about multiple shower heads on these cruise ships uh, uh, how do you how do you how do you figure them out <laughs> the problem jim is if you're in a hurry you know you, you got four guys sharing an inside room and they all got to get the shower because they all want to go to the buffet because you know they're all one biscuit short of you know of a certain weight point and it's hard work maintaining that kind of bulk uh, you know, you, if you're in a hurry, get in the shower, and you're, it's your first night, you don't know how to operate the darn thing, there's going to be a lot of fumbling and jumbling going on with those knobs. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be crazy, uh, just out of control. Uh, <laughs> Jim Thomas, haven't laughed this hard in a long time. <laughs> I don't even know if you can get four guys into the bathroom. I mean, you get one guy in the shower stall, you got one guy sitting on the throne, you got one guy standing in front of the mirror where the sink is, if that's even doable. And the fourth guy, can he get into the room and shut the door behind him? I don't I don't think it's doable. I, I mean, it all depends. How much tonnage are we talking about here? Um, are we one biscuit short of 1,600 pounds? Or what are we talking about here? I, I don't know. Uh, I, it may not be the weight that's the problem. It might could be just the girth of the, you know. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jordan. Oh my God! The image, laughing out loud. The image. Randy Lucas mm, buffet. Plenty of biscuits there. That's right. All the biscuits you want for the appetizer, the main course, and dessert. That's right. And you can go back for seconds. Grab a soup bowl. Just go over to the gravy section. Just fill that up with gravy. Grab a couple of biscuits and head over to your table and do some dipping. Ah, uh, good dipping on those biscuits on those buffets. There's never ending amount of biscuits. Those biscuit machines. I was reading on uh, the Royal Caribbean on the Symphony of the Seas. They've got the onboard automated biscuit bacon machine. Four thousand biscuits an hour. Four thousand biscuits an hour. I, I don't think we can catch up to that thing. That thing will just keep cranking them out for us. No shortage of biscuits on board the uh, cruise ship. Let me tell you, Mar Mary T. Okay, I've just been listening. Maybe you should do a deluxe ocean room with an extra bathtub. <laughs> Mary, we're trying to save a couple of bucks here. Uh, we're we're just talking about twelve cruises back to back on an inside room. Uh, you know, we're trying to make it economical. I mean, the Bean keeps talking to us about. I can't get the signal the single supplement deal going. I need a I need a a, a bargain. You got to help me out, Bruce. You and Jen, you got to let me in. And I'm thinking, no, no, it's uh, Randy's on the right track here. It's Bruce with Randy and Jim and the Beaner uh, right there. Uh, you got four guys splitting the splitting the cost of the inside room. Uh, oh man, there'll be plenty of money for onshore excursions. <laughs> Tracy Dunlop, Beans ears must be ringing. I'm sure they are. I don't know where he is today. Uh, Paul Willis, the Bean is going to. Is on a cruise soon, so he won't be one biscuit shy anymore. No, he won't. Uh, the beaner will be loading up. He's going to get his fair share. If he has to pay a supplement, a single supplement as an add-on, you know he's going to get his fair share of that of those biscuits. He's not going to let those go away. He wants his fair share, absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Oh my God, he won't be one biscuit shy anymore. Wendy, uh, didn't people try that with the VW Bugs? How many they could fit in there? Yeah, that's right. And Randy Lucas, Mary T, we're on the cheap. <laughs> we're on the cheap, Mary. We told our wives to go somewhere else for three months, and we're looking to triple, quadruple up. Oh my goodness, I'm thinking the st the strategy is that you're in the inside room and you've got the shower going. The strategy is that if you're soaping up, you know, you're so slippery that the four guys can easily get around in that bathroom because the four guys are all soaped up. Uh, you know, there, it's no problem getting from one. It might actually be dangerous because, you know, the, the three guys over here, one guy wants to get over there. He might pop out, you know, like between the bodies and just whoosh, it'll be whipped over there. Got to be careful. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's enough padding in the bathroom to guard against getting hurt in there uh, from all the squishing and the, yeah, I don't know, uh, the, the imagery is getting uglier all the time. Uh, Randy, Mary T, we're on the chief. Uh, Tracy, so do the spa showers have multiple shower heads? Uh, Tracy, I think it depends on the, uh, I think it depends on the uh, cruise line and uh, which uh, spa, part of the spa you're in, I guess. Uh, I haven't uh, had multiple shower heads uh, on any of the spas I've been on. I've been on the Epic and the nice showers, but just, you know, the big one. I've uh, been on the uh, Ruby Princess, same thing. Uh, uh, the Jade, no, not multiple. The Jade did have the nice rain shower. That, that was nice. But I don't recall. Uh, but but then again, things have changed, and they're changing all the time. So maybe. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Randy Lucas. Bruce, oh, my God. <laughs> Paul Wilkes, I'm laughing my ass off here. Nina, I hope for, uh, hope for, hope for some Hollywood and celebs trivia for show tonight. <laughs> She's desperately, desperately trying to change the topic here. Uh, you're looking for Hollywood and celebrity trivia tonight. Make it fun, Bruce. Oh, I'm ready. I've got topics. I'm ready to go. Uh, Tom Henry on the Bliss. They do, Tracy. There you go. The Bliss has got multiple shower heads in the spa area. There's hope for the passengers on the inside cabins. There's hope. Uh, there might be uh, multiple. Uh, Tom Henry, apart, uh, uh, apart suite, not, not the apartment showers. <laughs> <laughs> Mary T, uh, Timmy, Timmy, I, I don't know, uh, Tommy, Tommy, I don't know, folks, uh, I, I think four guys, uh, each one biscuit short of certain weight goals, uh, that could be a bit too much, way too much, uh, no, not at all, sorry, no, Nina, it's okay, Nina, you're good, you can ask anything you want, I'm just having fun with you, uh, Tracy, uh, I'm just picturing all you guys in the spa using multiple shower heads and water everywhere, oh, I think the staff will put an end to that, uh, the staff's gonna go, no, 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 no ma, no ma. <laughs> Tom Henry, this autocorrect needs to go. It's got to go. Randy Lucas on the Regal and Royal Spa. It they do. They got multiple shower heads in the spas. Oh, wonderful. And Jordan, great trivia. How's the steam? Hope all goes well. <laughs> Debbie Manuel, uh, too much information. That's what you say. Too TMI. It's too much. It's too much. Cool jazz, uh, too much information, Bruce. We're getting way too much imagery here. We don't need this. Oh my God. Ah, yeah. Uh, I tell you, uh, this show is is actually this show could work on radio. <laughs> man, oh man, I'll tell you that's uh, that is uh, one hell of a deal. I don't know what to say except I am on later tonight at eight o'clock Eastern time, and it is trivia night, and I've got trivia questions. If you like chocolate, you're gonna love trivia night. Who doesn't like chocolate? Uh, if you like eating, you'll like this. You'll like the show tonight. Who doesn't like eating? Uh, yeah, I got, I got stuff. I'm ready. I'm ready to go on trivia tonight. Should be a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, way too much information. Uh, I don't know who's. Did I start it, or did Jim start it, or did Randy? So who started it? I don't know. But the Beaner, the Beaner was here. He'd be in on this. He'd be. Oh, he'd be all over this. Uh, and and Jordan, uh, nightmares are starting to set in. Laugh out loud, Randy Lucas. I have the perfect body for radio. <laughs> I've got the perfect face for radio. Uh, let's see her. Uh, uh, Mary T, uh, TMI, too much information. Cool jazz. Bakersfield in the trivia tonight, Bruce. Make sure Bakersfield is in there. Tom Henry, Bean too. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, too much going on. Uh, Randy, Randy started it. Sorry, folks. <laughs> uh, which ship is that? I uh, have the scented showers. Which ship has the scented showers? I, I don't know. Does, uh, do, do any of the cruise ships have scented showers? Uh, I, I don't know about that. Uh, they do have like, a, you know, a, a aromatherapy spa rooms and stuff like that on some of these cruise lines. 
But uh, showers, I, I'm not sure about that. Uh, you know, the spa showers I use, you know, they got the body wash and they got the shampoo. That's that. Those are your choices. And, uh, you know, you go with whatever scent they're offering you. <laughs> you can't be, you can't, beggars can't be choosy. Uh, not, not in the, uh, not in the spa area. But the, generally I, I don't mind the, the odors or the smells of the, uh, the ship provided, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, lotions and hand body cream stuff. Quite nice. Uh, Randy goes, every shower I take is an, it has an aroma. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, Bruce, uh, Randy, uh, cool jazz. Bruce have red bubble put uh, traveling with Bruce on, on wine. On what, what does that mean? Or, or you mean online? They're Paul Williams. Uh, two, I'm laughing my ass off, Randy. Nina, there, there was one ship. She's saying with us with the order, the aroma shower. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Cool jazz. Uh, <laughs> Oh my my! Uh, yes, well, there you go. I, I think we can end it here. Uh, Steamer, if you're out there and you catch this rerun, uh, I hope you stick around long enough for the rerun to catch what happened at the end of the show. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, Kuzma, start selling wine with your logo. Start selling wine. Traveling with Bruce, wine. I I don't know about that. Uh, that I don't know if they could do that. Uh, Tom Henry, those scents are. Oro Bob, look, yes, <laughs> Tom Henry, Tom Henry, you're having fun with your automatic spelling, I think. Uh, so I'm not sure what you're saying. Uh, Ann Jordan, the bliss has cursed us. Trivia ago, laugh out loud, the seaside. No, Wendy Thompson, baby oil, folks, baby oil. There you go. There's the solution. <laughs> the solution to four guys in an inside suite uh, that that are one biscuit short of some serious milestones. Make a good conversation piece at dinner. Well, yeah, I guess that's true. If you, if you came to the restaurant, you ordered a traveling with Bruce wine, please. Uh, that'd make an interesting conversation piece. I guess you're right. Uh, sounds good. Bye, everyone. Dumb Henry is saying, I don't know. Anyway, folks, I'm going to say my goodbyes here. How many thumbs ups did we get versus thumbs down with this show? 28 ups, two downs, two people were revolted. 28 okays. Uh, thanks for the thumbs ups, you guys. If you can spare one on the way uh, you're sh as you're shutting off, that would be great. Uh, I'll be on 8 o'clock Eastern, so that is in uh, one hour, 40 minutes. I'm back with trivia tonight. Be there or be square. Uh, we'll see if you guys are going to show up or not. Uh, sounds good from Tom Henry, Jim Thomas. Okay, see you tonight in my, and in my nightmares. Jim is saying, Randy Lucas, bye all. Have a good one, you guys. Thanks for popping by today and all your support. I'll see you in an hour, 40 minutes on trivia. This is Bruce saying thank you for joining me on my channel, Traveling with Bruce, today on uh, June the 19th. Tuesday, June 19th, 2018. Thanks for popping by. We'll see you at 8 o'clock Eastern for trivia, if you dare, or be square. Catch you later. Bye for now.